This is Notion, a markdown editor with a couple extra features, being obsessively used by productivity gurus. This is Obsidian, a simple and basically free markdown editor for the actually productive people. And this is what happens when you combine Notion and Obsidian into one and make it as simple to use as possible. So let's do that in C Sharp. New project, Windows Forms, some magic, and now I have a background color, an empty sidebar, and two transparent text boxes. 30 minutes of footage, boom, deleted. Then I change the form style to not have that ugly top bar and make it borderless. Some shenanigans later, I have close, minimize, and maximize working. Then I resize the text boxes to be just like Notion, wasting space on the sides. Okay, this is kind of crap, so let's populate the sidebar. I'm going to borrow some elements from my last video about making a file explorer where I also had a sidebar and use user controls. So I'll create a new one, copy over this code from it, and I also added a variable for the note title and a path, which I'll use later. Now I can add some user controls to the sidebar, and every time they get clicked, I get a message box saying which one it was. As these are placeholders, let's implement a loading and saving system. Each node is going to be saved in JSON with two parameters, title and content. For loading nodes, I have two functions, one loading the whole data directory and populating the sidebar with user controls, and one for loading a singular note title and content to be displayed in the text boxes. Then for loading, I will use the code I copied before, which on click of a node loads it from the JSON file assigned to it using the function I just described. So now I have a simple notepad with a sidebar. Wow, innovative technology, I must say. Two hours of footage, deleted. So I guess it works, but still looks kind of crap. And that's where mobbing comes in. If you ever found yourself looking through random screenshots and UI concepts, Mobbin is for you. Mobbin is a massive database of high quality app screens and entire user flows from production apps that actually work. You can look through thousands of mobile and web screenshots organized so that you can actually find what you need. Want to see how apps handle logging screens or settings? Mobbin lets you browse everything from simple elements to full flows. Just look at how many screenshots for Notion they have. I can search for apps, elements and categories. If I find a design I like, I can save it to my collection or download it. No need to go into the app and screenshot it manually. Mobbin has all the high quality images you need. So click the link in the description and check out Mobbin's library of half a million screenshots and 260,000 flows from over 1,200 apps. The first thing I'm adding is a new note button. Yes, a very important thing. For the button, I'm using an icon from fontawesome.sharp. When you create a new note, the code saves the currently open note, clears the content text box and sets the title to new note and changes its color to gray, runs the save function and creates a new empty save file and finally updates the sidebar. Here it is working. After that, I spent a bit too much time on this fancy effect which makes the UI for this disappear when you are in the writing area. Kinda useless, but still, one less element to distract you. Next comes the button to delete a note. At first, I didn't have a good place to put it in, but then I had the genius idea to add these three dots to the top corner, and when you press them, it opens a menu with a trash icon. Wow, innovative technology, I, I must say. When you click the button, it tries to delete the current path, which stores the path to the current open notes data file. Then it clears the text boxes, reloads the sidebar, loads the next note and hides the trash button. So let's add the first text feature, bullet points. For that, I have a simple system which detects if I typed this and then pressed enter and replaces those two with my fancy bullet point, which you can change to the code by the way. And when you press the enter key at the end of the line, it creates a new line with a bullet point. And to get out of the list, you just remove the bullet point character and type normally. This approach has a small advantage that I don't have to modify the way I save my notes as this is just a regular Unicode character. Based on this, I can also duplicate the system and change it to replace two brackets with a box that I will use as a checkbox. Now, here I want 
5 goading mode. In GPD-5, wrote me something that actually makes it so that when you click this box character, it's replaced with a ticked box Unicode character. It appears that it checks on which character the mouse is, and this is that character checkbox, and then, based on which selection it's in, it replaces the character and updates the text. Okay. Now, let's add speech recognition. I added a new button with a microphone to my three dot menu, which when you press, disables typing in the content box and types what you say. To stop, you just press it again. For this, I'm using the Microsoft Speech Recognition Nugget Package, works offline, and it's from Microsoft, so it is clearly the best. I used some random online articles until it worked, so thank you random online articles. This is a test of the speech recognition. Okay, that, that works pretty good. That, that's good. Hello, world. Hello, everyone. Please subscribe. I repeat, everybody subscribe right now. Yes, exactly. Very good. Yeah, okay, this works pretty fine. Yeah, now I have a note-taking app that is made from the best elements of Notion and Obsidian. No AI crap, no paid stuff, and everything stored locally. Simple, just works. Here it is. Welcome to the final program. I have the menu here. I can delete the notes. I can create a new one. Note 5. I can write regular text. I also added this cool separator, I, I guess. Then I can do this and have points. Then another separator and I can add checkboxes, which actually work. And yeah, then I can return to typing back normally. Of course, I press the microphone, subscribe. Perfect, everything's working. So yeah, is it the best? Well, not really, but it works. And maybe, just maybe, I'll come back to this in the future. The next video is going to be absolutely epic. And hey, I'm trying to move to two uploads per month, so cool, I guess. Code is on GitHub. And by the way, I'm looking for a video editor who edits in preferably DaVinci Resolve, but Premiere Pro is also fine. Write me an email if interested. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>